Hello everybody, it's Daniel here again with our Monday's um, Creative Art and Expression. So um, I'm going to be continuing our talk from last Monday about finding your art. And I'm also going to be con um, working to finish up this, this um, uh, bit of artwork that I started last Monday. I did most of the line work last Monday just to give you an idea of how to use a... Um, a reference and now I'm going to be adding some uh, shading and some 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 um, oh um, some different tones to it um, as you can see I don't know if you watched the video last Monday but I did um, finish the coloring uh, after the video because that gets a bit tedious and it takes a little time so I decided to you know go ahead and do that um, on my own personal time and I did add, um, change some things up just a little bit um, not not a whole lot just kind of twisted some things and turned some things um, so last week again last week I was talking about um, you know finding your art and um, finding your own way of expressing yourself um, hold on just a moment I'm just looking for a brush here here we go Actually, I'm going to use this this vintage marker. I, I've in the past week, I've really been um, practicing more and more um, doing digital work, and I found that I've fallen in love with this particular this brush, this vintage marker, um, in doing my my uh, lighting and shadowing and things of that sort. So. Um, one of the things you want to be mindful of when you're doing your lighting and your shadowing is finding where your light source is coming from. Um, if you're not mindful of where your light source is coming from, you're going to be putting shadows all over the place. You're going to be putting light in places it doesn't belong. And this is something that I'm still very much practicing on. Um, I usually try to play it safe when I'm doing it, but um, one of the things that may help, again, is using your reference. And I lost my original reference for this, this particular young lady. I don't know what I did with it. I didn't save it on the side here, but you know, I can kind of eye it out and decide where I want my light and shadow to be. So, uh oh, did something I didn't want to do here. Whoop, let's see, reset, done. Okay, so what I'm doing first is I'm adding another layer. Remember, I don't know, remember last week we talked about um, the different layers over in our right hand corner. So we have this, this line layer here, which these lines are way thicker than I usually use. But it's, uh, thicker lines are good for like um, more cartoonish type characters. Then we, I have under that my color layer. And then between those two, I'm going to put um, my shading and my lighting. So I added another layer, and I'm going to put that on multiply. And again, um, this particular app that I'm using, I got it out of the App Store. It's really easy to use. It's free, um, and it's really good, and I do all my work on it. So you can definitely find that in the App Store, or you, you can use this program, or maybe another one that works a lot better for you. I don't know, but this one just works really good for me. Um, so anyway, I'm going to decide where I want my light to be. So I'm going to, in my head, I'm imagining probably a light source here that's going to be resonating kind of down the middle but I'm gonna take that out Don't want all that. so if my light source is coming from there then my shadow is going to be along the edges here and so, you know what I'm not gonna use multiply for this I'm gonna do color burn so I'm doing color burn and I'm using a lighter gray and it'll give me um, a darker color here, deeper tones. So what I'm doing is I'm imagining where the curves and different shapes will be, which is where I'm going to be putting the darkness. And i got to use my imagination a bit here because, again, I, I got rid of my reference. So I'm putting some shading under this little frills here 
down the side because remember I said my lighting is going to go kind of down the middle. Okay. And so um, this is what I do particularly on um, this app and when I'm doing my artwork. But of course, um, when you're doing your artwork or when you're deciding what it is you want to do or how you want to do it, you're going to find your own ways of doing things. Um, because with painting, of course, it's going to be different. And let me see if I can find a different paint, a brush here. Um, so you have all these different brushes on the side. So maybe you want to try out painting, but you don't want to dive head first into it. These different brushes and these different tools will give you a good, um, good chance to kind of try things out. It's not exactly like using real paint, but it'll kind of give you that feel to, to, to decide like, hey, I like the way this looks, so maybe I'll try it out. So um, one of the things that I found I do like in trying out, and I can't find the particular tool, is I like um, watercolors. This is something I found out while I was working with the um, the um, young people at the library when we were able to go. Oh, there's a watercolor brush, it's salty watercolors. And I don't know how that's gonna look, but we can test it out. Yep, that's really thick. And so every once in a while, um, Oh, see, I like that. I like that. So using these different brushes give you also gives you different um, textures. So you see on this side I have the straight lines, but I think I'm going to go over that with the watercolor brush just to give me different textures and different lighting. Because usually what I'll do is I'll, I'll go over this with the... Um, the um, smudge tool. So th that is this tool here on my left hand side. And what the smudge tool does is it um, kind of blends everything. And I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully you can. But instead of blending with the smudge tool, I think I like what the um, this watercolor brush is doing. See, and, I, uh, and last week I said um, when you're looking to find what your art is, you got to dabble. You got to try things out. Got to see what works for you. And I think this is kind of working for me. Kind of, sort of. Like I said, I like that it's giving me a little more texture, but it may not necessarily be what I want for this particular um, drawing. But nothing wrong with testing it out. So what I'm having to do with this particular brush is I'm not keeping a constant um, contact with onto the screen because what it does is as I'm using it is giving me like an automatic smudge or uh, yeah so it's not giving me exactly what I want so I'm gonna go ahead in there again with the smudge tool but it was interesting to try that out and see what it does Because another thing we talked about last week is um, when you're trying things out, you may dis discover ways to do things. The, the, the skill you learn doing one thing may carry over to something else. So the watercolors may carry over to what I'm doing somewhere else. Like here. So I like this really blended because what I really want to do is I'm going to layer it. I'm going to add more layers to it. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this. 
but I'm going to blend it just enough. And again, this is just what I do when I'm doing my drawings. You're definitely going to find your way of doing things. You're going to find things that you like, you don't like. You're going to find things that works better for your pieces. But this is just something I do because I do more of. Um, have it already already because we're supposed to be doing this together except for the things that we didn't do together that I did on my own time sorry so I'm gonna give her a shadow on both sides of her face and again the, using a reference for these parts is really good just to know where you want your light and shadow to be like I said, my light is down the middle, so I'm going to go on both sides of her with some shading. And I'm going to use my smudge tool, and I'm trying to work very quickly to be respectful of your time and mine. Go over, even that out. And I'm not going to go over her hair today. We'll probably do that next week or another time. Um, just because that takes a whole nother um, set of tools and skills. And I also won't go into the eyes today because I really want to go into detail over the eyes because I, I the, the, um, the old saying um, eyes are the windows to the soul is really, it really does apply for um, artwork because those eyes, it makes a huge difference to your, your piece when you're working. Because if you can get the eyes right, then everything else kind of just falls in place. And this isn't my best work because I'm trying to work quickly. Usually, usually this process takes a lot longer. Because um, I try to be more mindful and more careful. And see, that just adds a little dimension to her. So then again, I'm going to go over, I'm going to add another layer. So this is my fourth layer and I'm going to do multiply this time. I said I was going to do multiply before, but I didn't. I did color burn. So on this multiply layer, I'm just going to go over, hold on, it's the smudge tool. I'm going to use my vintage marker and I'm going to go over that those same areas I did shadow in and I'm going to go over it again, just not as far. And then I'm mindful of twists and turns and ripples and curves. I'm going to add that shading in. Okay. Like I said, one of the cool things about this app is just all the tools and all the things you can do with it, all the things you can try out. I mean, even if you just want to try it out just for, um, you know, just as a hobby or just to have something to do, keep your hands busy, it's really cool for that because I know one of the things that um, a lot of people I know like to do is they use the, um, the mandalas, I think it's called, those coloring books. They call them adult coloring books, but let's be honest, all coloring books can be adult coloring books. And so you can kind of create your own um, coloring station using these different apps. And I know I'm going outside the lines and that's fine. I can always come back in and go over it again. Do not be afraid to go outside the lines. Because you just might find you like it. Hey, there's no problem with that. I remember being in daycare years and years ago. Um, we were coloring and I'm going to do the underside of her nose because the nose usually has a shadow under it. We were coloring um, cars and uh, I'm just a coloring away at my car. I'm having a good old time and teacher's like you color this and you color that and I start to I pull out my little blue crayon 
I says, I'm going to color the windows blue. And I started coloring. And I remember as soon as I started coloring, she said, and don't color the windows. <laughs> and so I'm like, I stopped in my tracks. And I'm like, I don't even remember her name, but I'm like, yeah, I colored my windows. She's like, that's fine. And I'm going to use my smudge tool again just to blend this shadow. She was like, well, it will just fix it. And we got, she got a Lego and she's scraping the blue crayon off of my, my windows. And uh, that memory stuck with me for some reason. And it's so funny because now as I uh, do my colors and stuff, even if it's a clear surface, I'm finding that you actually do have to add color to it. If you look at, especially car windows, if you look at car windows, car windows are like this greenish bluish color. So we're always telling kids, don't color outside the line, color this way, color that way. It's like, no, let the kids color. Because you're definitely going to find things um, out about how they view the world as they're coloring. You're going to find out how you view the world as you're doing things. So if you pay attention to how kids draw, especially younger kids, they may make uh, a nose bigger or a foot bigger or a, um, eyes bigger. That is because that is something that is um, sticks out in their mind. It's something that they notice, these different features. When they're drawing the family, they put them in different positions because that's how they, how they see the world. So pay attention to that stuff. And again, even as you're drawing and expressing yourself, as you're doing these things, pay attention to your positioning and what you notice and what you see. Let me see. Do I like that? That does add just a bit of layer. Oh. Close that. Hello. It's just me. It's just you. you can hey, y'all. <laughs> they can't see you, but oh, they can hear you. Me, no. You can hear me. Hey, y'all. That's Miss Tish. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, that smells good. Are you on the diet? Not yet. Okay. Not. Okay. Remember. Leave y'all. Hey, y'all. I'm out. <laughs> All right. What you making? So I'm finishing up this. this oh, nice. Yeah. See, we started this last week, and I put the color to it, and now we're adding oh, that shading is, and that stuff. That looks like me. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you next leave, time. Yeah, give me later. Give me later. <laughs> So she brought me some mozzarella sticks and they smell really, 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 really good. So we may have to cut this session short just so I can get at these mozzarella sticks. <laughs> and of course I wouldn't do that. And so we're getting, we're blending that. And you'll find with um, a lot of cartoons, um, hold on, I'm going to blend that some they have these really straight line shadows and that's something I've kind of started really incorporating to my artwork not that layer and I don't know if I said I, I, I made a, another video not the one I did for heart love last week but I, I've gotten into the habit of recording myself as I'm drawing so I can go back and look at it and also so I can share with other people um, my creations as I'm doing it because because that process I feel is really important for people to see because if you don't see the process then you don't understand what kind of work goes into it and so you may look at a, a particular artist and say man they're really good and I can't do that but if you watch the process of me drawing like you're doing now you can see that oh no it's not that hard oh yeah he makes a lot of mistakes maybe I can do the, what he's doing so I think that process sharing that process of creating is really important um, and there was a point I was gonna make and I, I just forgot it as I was um, sharing oh man I, I completely forgot the point I was gonna make um, anyway I probably got off topic like four or five times but the straight line shadows I was talking about you'll find those um, a lot in cartoons um, they just do a really straight shadow and like I said I, that's something I've kind of added into my or try to add into my artwork because I love how clean it looks how straight it looks um, and it's definitely something you'll see in real life because when something is casting a shadow, it casts it usually casts it exactly how you see it, unless you put a little distance between the um, object and the light source, then the shadow becomes a little blurry. But I like to add these really straight um, 
shadows to. So as every time you add a layer, it adds more depth to the the drawing or the picture or the creation, however you want to describe it. And I usually go less and less space. Again, this is just how I do it. There are better ways of doing it if you, if you like. There are different ways of doing it. There is your way of doing it, which works for you, but you'll only find your way of doing it by trying it out. But I do, I like these really straight lines. And I said I was going to put shadow on both sides, but again, for the sake of time, I'm going to just kind of get through here. Because I also want to put just a little bit of lighting on it. Let's see, here we go. Do, do, do. And you can add as many layers of shadow as you feel uh, a creation needs. I, I usually stop now, just recently, at three or four because I take it smaller and smaller um, and I'll put more shadow just in like uh, the little corners where I feel um, it would be darker. I'm not going to put too much here and a lot of times I'll go over it with my little eraser just to sharpen that up and again this isn't exactly right but feel free to play around with it as you're doing it I do want a little shadow on that nose so I'm gonna use a different brush just to get into some little crevices here so I'm using my technical pen just to get into the nostrils and I'll go back on another layer and add. Yeah. And again, it's not perfect, but it's, it's what we're doing right now. I'm going to add some shadow here. And these lines here, um, my line work, that's a lot thicker than I usually like to use. But for the sake of this video, just so you can see what I'm doing, that's why I decided to use these line work. So, for now, I'm going to leave that, and then, let's see, just so you can see what the difference is. Play around with that. And I will take my eraser and just kind of get in there and get those outside lines. Because once you start adding background, um, and I usually do my background on the layer behind the color layer, the first color layer. You will notice those a lot more. Okay, and so I'm going to do just a little bit of lighting. So I'll go add another layer right under my, my line layer. And what I usually do is I'll do overlay and then I'll take my airbrush and depending on how light I want things to be I'll usually use a gray and sometimes a white if I want it to be really bright but remember I said my my um, light source was going to be reflecting here that's a little bright Hold on. So I'm going to take it down just one gray shade and then I'm going to make my airbrush bigger, make the flow a little less. That's a little too, too less maybe. So there we go, add just a little lighting. And this is not necessary. Um, but it's something I do sometimes. I'm going to have to let that ring. Right here and here. And usually here in this elbow here, I put a little more shadow. But I didn't this time because, you know, the elbow bends. So there should be a little more shadow. 
Oh man, my work phone and my cell phone is ringing. I never get calls, like honestly. So then I'm going to put just a actually a little less on the bridge of the nose, on the eyebrows, on the chin. And I'm going to blend it. Now, I was saying before that different art can carry over to different things. One of the ways I learned how to, to light and shade a face is watching makeup tutorials. If you watch those, when they do the, um, the um, what do they call it, contouring, what they're actually doing is they're manipulating light and shadow. So that is a good way, and I'm blending, I'm blending this, this light, just bringing it in. I'm actually starting from the outside of the, the edge of the, um, the light, and I'm pulling it in. But yeah, when they're, they're contouring with the, the makeup, they're actually manipulating how you view light and shadow on the face. So, and by doing that, they're changing the, the shape of the face and the, the contours of their face. So a good, a good way to learn to um, manipulate light and shadow on the face of your characters as you're drawing, watch makeup tutorials, seriously. Like that changed the whole way I operated and did things with this, with this tool. So I'm just blending the edges of my, my light layer and I forgot a kneecap there, that's fine. But you can see just it just adds a little bit of something and I'm actually gonna find this one shadow layer and blend that a little bit Oop, where'd it go right there Blend that a little bit and that's where we are right now so I'm actually gonna put this on pause um, because there's actually a scripture I want to read for you as soon as I can find it. Because as soon as I decide to start pulling it up, my computer decided to go to sleep. Hold on just a moment. And I'm trying not to recite my password too loud because I usually do that when I'm entering my password on my computer. But I don't want to do that too loud. Um, so this is our, our young lady so far. And like I said, I'll come back. And I'll probably do the hair and the eyes on the same day because I like to go into a lot of detail with the eyes because there's a lot of expression. And as you can see, these are kind of dead eyes right now. We don't want that. We want lively eyes. So um, the scripture I wanted to read for you um, as it pertains to artwork and artists in creating things. Um, let me see. It was... Was it Exodus? Actually, I'll probably read a couple of them for you if I can't find the one I was looking for. So in Exodus um, 35, 30, verse 35, it says, He has filled them with skill to do every sort of work done by an engraver or by a designer or by an embroiderer in blue and purple and scarlet yarns and fine twined linen or by weaver, by any sort of workman or skilled designer. So I forget exactly what they were doing at this time in the Bible. They were, um, and I should have gotten the whole context instead of just pulling that one verse. But in this particular verse, I believe they were working on the temple and getting the robes ready for the, um, the priest. And he's telling them, get your best artists and your best craftsmen and all your designers and have them come work on this. And I thought that was one of, that was awesome. Um, as it pertains to artwork and, and, and doing things uh, and creating things. And I'm actually looking at this website and there's like this whole list of different scriptures that pertain to artwork and artists in the Bible and using their skills and their gifts from God. In fact, there's one that here that says, um, hold on, oh, I just lost it. I just lost it, I apologize. But just remember that these skills and these artistic visions and these um, abilities that you have are for the use of 
not just yourself, but for other people. I remember someone told me um, years ago um, that the she, she said to me, she says, the world is waiting for you. The world needs to hear from you. She says, you can't hide what you do because it is very much needed. And I was like, okay. And that's not something that I gave a lot of thought to at that time. But as I'm getting older and realizing that our skills and our our gifts are not just for ourselves, but for other people, too. Um, and very much when you're working to stay within God's will, one of the things you have to do is use the gifts, the gifts and the skills that he's given you in service to him. I believe there's no higher form of praise to God than to use his gifts that he's given you in his service. And I feel like that's what I'm doing a bit here as I'm working to try to um, share my my bits of knowledge and my skills or talents or the things I've practiced with other people and encouraging them and you all who is ever watching and listening to um, use your voice and use your gift. Um, I never really felt like I had a, a, a voice to speak but I definitely have these skills and I use those and as I'm doing this and sharing my voice is becoming stronger in in um, sharing and I'm learning to express myself in different ways and uh, definitely thankful for that I'm just I, as I'm talking I'm trying to keep my screen going so I'm probably gonna put a little something on her but um, yeah definitely um, keep checking us out um, ooh, that's not a layer I want to be working on I don't think um, I'll be here again next Monday um, doing our creative arts and, and uh, expression and I'll be on Zoom on Wednesday so if you want to join the Zoom and kind of talk a bit more and get more in depth about um, artwork and finding your artwork and how to make that work and, and finding your voice we can definitely talk about that um, just go to the events page on our website and uh, fill out the form to sign up for the zoom and we'll we'll get you that information to join um, or you can just email me at djames at heartloveplace.org um, also we will be here tomorrow doing our life skills program I, I definitely suggest um, looking into that because Miss Tish will be here and we always have an awesome time, awesome time talking and um, and uh, learning together um, and then we'll be doing the zoom for our life skills on Thursday um, again you can go to the events page on our Heart Love Place website um, www.heartloveplace.org go to the events page and you can sign up for the the life skills there or you can email myself at djames at heartloveplace.org or Ms. Tish at tguiden at heartloveplace.org either way um, definitely sign sign up join the zoom um, and we can talk and converse and it'll be more than just me talking and, and, and finding my words anyway we'll finish our young lady next week yeah, she won't be completely finished. I'm probably going to work on the shadowing a, a bit more just to kind of give you an, a, a better idea of what we can work with. Um, and we'll work on her her eyes and her hair because those eyes are super important. If we're expressing ourselves, then we got to get the eyes right. So um, love you. Keep checking with us. Keep checking in with us. We're praying for you. Please pray for us. And um, we'll get you next week as soon as I find my little off button here. And in live.